Hey everybody, it's Jillian Barbary. And of course, Liz joins me today for Ask Jillian. And I'm with one of my very good friends. And I know in Hollywood they say, oh, you're saying, oh, shut up. Everybody's good friends. But she truly is in my life for the past, oh my God, over 20 years. Oh my God. You might know her from like, well, Inside Edition, which you are chasing bad guys with lipstick and heels. <laughs> Your NFL, Monday Night NFL Football, which was massive. Best damn sports show. Lisa Guerrero is with me before I run down your entire career. <laughs> and before that, soap opera actress. She was on Sunset Beach. Did you know that, Liz? She looks like a soap opera yes, actress. Yes, you. Ooh, thank you. I was a villainess. <gasps> Ooh, Nasty. that's juicy. Ooh, I was sleeping with all these people. Right on. And on like a home wrecker. Oh, those Jewel were the days. Did you? Jeez. Murder anybody? How did you? Bum, bum, bum. Did you get killed? How did I you did. end up? I get killed. I got well th at the time. So Aaron Spelling. This is an Aaron Spelling show. Oh, good. And one. he brought me on in order to be like the female J.R. Ewing because remember when Who Shot J.R. was a big. Oh my god, thing? it was massive. So what they had me do is for one year, my character tortured, bribed, blackmailed, <laughs> um, slept with people. It's, uh, she created enemies everywhere with all the ten major characters. So wow. that at the end of this year, my character gets killed off. And but it was a whodunit? I didn't know who did it because everybody had Motiva a, motive. a lot of motivation to kill me off. <laughs> you were and diabolical. So di it, was, it was the best role. I and bet. the funniest thing is they couldn't just kill me because she was such a spectacular character. They had wheeled out this, <laughs> it was like this big birthday party and they had me in a cake. And I had already been shot. I'm in a leather <laughs> cat suit. So I'm bleeding in the middle of this cake. And I pop out of the cake in front of all the characters and point, <laughs> you did it. You killed me. And then I fall out of the cake. And oh nobody knows God. and the audience do doesn't know who I pointed at. Oh, so that's It was spectacular. Great. So that's amazing. Aaron Spelling. And were you, was the character a Latina or they didn't? Yeah, so, okay. The First, this is a funny story. I originally auditioned for the role of a rape victim on this show named Maria. And I went all the way to the screen test. I got to the screen test and I just decided I was going to play a victim as not a victim. And I, you know, barge onto this, you know, this scene and all the actresses that had tested had been crying blah, 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 and I was furious about the rape and I didn't get the role, but Aaron Spelling saw it and he said, this woman is not a victim. I'm going to write a role for her. And his oh favorite gosh. film was Gilda. Oh, starring Rita oh. Hayworth. And so my character, Francesca Vargas, was based on Gilda. And Gilda she was, was a, a Latina, by the way. She yeah, was she was. Yeah, yeah, she, she was. was. People don't know that because yes. they go, oh. Yeah. What was her the name, name of the show? I mean, is it on Sunset Hulu? Sunset Beach. Oh, it was, <gasps> oh, yeah. Sunset Beach. It was, it was set NBC. in like uh, Santa Barbara or something. No, Sunset I mean, Beach. Sun it was here. Sunset to be, Beach here? Yeah, Sunset Beach. So it's oh. supposed to be like Southern California Beach town. Right. But I was a European jewel thief. And my of boyfriend was. Of course, yes. It makes all the sense in the world. And Eddie Cibrian was my love interest. Oh. So I got to kiss yeah, he was on fun. him a lot. Yeah, that was fun. That's oh, the one with Brandy and then Leanne Rimes, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. He's hot. I did a Toyota so racing hot. thing with him. He's really good looking. We mm. need a reunion show so I can kiss him again. <laughs> <laughs> and then did have Leanne ever... Rimes go ape shit on you. Did they ever reveal who did kill you? Yes. Um, oh, Gregory. Gregory killed me. What did you do the to patriarch. Gregory that he felt like you needed to be killed? I was blackmailing his daughter. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. You sound pretty it bad. Was, I it's, was very bad. But it's but fun to play way. that, right? Yeah. It was, that was best because you got to just torture people and exactly. you laugh at it. It was funny. She had the funny lines and it was good. So then, okay, so you do that. That was the first acting and what a big, huge acting part yeah. that was for Aaron Spelling. It doesn't get any bigger than that. Yeah, that was my first contract. But you stepped on, out of the box. You didn't play her as a victim. You're like, mm -hmm. I'm going to play her as angry. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes people stand out. And I think that's a whole other TED Talk. But you then... How do you transition from that to... Okay, so the other interesting thing that happened was the day that I got the offer from Aaron Spelling to play Francesca, I got an offer from CBS2 to be a sportscaster here locally on the exact same day. Oh I was my at God. Gladstone's on PCH with my acting class friends, and I get a phone call from my manager saying, you're not going to believe this. We've got an offer for you for Sunset Beach on NBC and an offer for you to be the first female sportscaster on CBS2 in Los wow. Angeles. Why did they so you approach sports? you yeah, for, as a broadcaster? I had wanted to do both in my career. So I created one headshot and resume as oh. Lisa Coles, an actress, which is my dad's last name, and another Lisa Guerrero as a sportscaster because I was told I couldn't do both. 
So I got two different agents. They didn't know that I had the other agent. And I went on auditions and jobs as Lisa Coles, the actress, and Lisa Guerrero, the broadcaster. I didn't even know all this. Very smart. The same day I got an offer for this. <laughs> so if you watch if you watch a Sunset Beach credits, I'm listed as Lisa Guerrero Coles because I combined my names because we were able to work out a deal where Monday through Friday, I worked for NBC as Francesca on Sunset Beach. And on Saturday and Sunday, I was a sportscaster with Jim Hill on CBS too. Wow. So I worked seven Busy. days a week yeah. for an entire year. Oh my gosh. Straight. I did not have a day off. But does it, did you feel that you didn't have a day off? Or did no, you feel like I don't care? it. Yeah. One of my, the exactly. best years of my life. Yeah. I loved it. I'm like you, Jillian. Yeah. I mean, we love Find to work. you love. And we love to work. Yeah. And so from there, wow, that's quite an interesting, you're doing the soap and you're doing, you're so right. You weren't able to do both at a time. I remember it was like, pick one or the other. And I was like, oh shit. All right. Well, okay. And then acting stuff just sort of happened after that, but it takes a while to do both at once is very rare. I would imagine. It was really rare. And I, I don't think they'd let lawyers will let you do that now. This was 20 years ago, but um, it, it was a huge opportunity for me because yeah. I got my feet wet in sports and, and, acting. At, and acting. And at the end of that year, I got an offer for a film in Toronto and I got a full-time contract offer with CBS too. So I chose broadcasting. Yeah. And now I look back and I still have dabbled in acting, but I look, I, I, often think what if I would have picked the film so you decide on broadcasting and then so then I become a sportscaster like full-time yeah wow. and that went, and you you were passionate about sports I to begin love with. sports well yeah. I was raised by a single dad I was a huge sports fan I loved especially Southern California sports Dodgers Lakers Clippers you know USC football UCLA hoops I mean I love sports I still do I'm a huge Rams fan former Rams cheerleader. So married a baseball player, married a baseball player. Jeez. Yeah. So my, I, I love sports. So it was natural. It was not work to me. It was mm -hmm. fun. And you know, I got to basically be on the sidelines or be up in the press box and how hard is free Dodger it's dogs. Fun. It was fun. How and was you knew, so fun. How yeah. would you learn all those facts or they just came naturally to you because of your passion or your upbringing? Yeah. yeah. I grew up, you know, my dad taught me how to score baseball games up in the stands. And, you know, we, we grew up in San Diego. So my first team was the chargers and I love Dan Fouts and Eric Coriel and mm -hmm. I just learned sports organically like a little boy would if he loved sports because you know my dad put me in sports and I went to the games with him and I watched everything so I just picked it up yeah he's amazing uh, the, your parents story because your mom came from Chile mm -hmm. and she, immigrant she was an immigrant and came here and she passed away when Lisa was what eight, eight. nine eight oh. mm -hmm. She was 29? Yeah, my mom was 29. <gasps> I know. She died of lymphoma. And my dad was, of course, a very young dad. I have a little brother that was six. Oh so my, my dad at 30 has like a six-year-old and an eight-year-old by himself in San Diego. Can all their you families imagine? Like in, in the South and in South America and Chicago, all the, you know, very far away. So my dad was a social worker for the Salvation Army, quit his job, becomes a consultant for the Salvation Army so he could work at home. And became a stay-at-home dad for my little brother and I. Went to every concert, every game. It's amazing. He's and he's still my best friend. I talk to him every day. Oh, that's yeah. incredible. Eighty-one years old, and, and he he's posts still going like strong. beautiful pictures of Huntington Beach. The Photographer, pier, yeah. yeah, writer, I mean, that's poet. So young that your mother passed away. Yeah, it's incredible, right? I mean, you don't have the sense of that when you're that small. You don't get it. But now I just look back. I'm like, oh, wow, my God. twenty-nine years old. I mean, it's that's shocking. incredibly young. I had a brother oh, that was crazy. eight years old. My father passed away, but he was 58. Right. 29. I mean, how quickly did she get diagnosed from into her passing? She found out at Christmas Eve Ugh. and she was gone by Valentine's <gasps> Eve. Is that crazy? Yeah. She just that's didn't know it. That's incredibly fast. Yeah. Do you think that has any, because I know you didn't want kids because Liz was asking me, oh, did Lisa have any kids? And I'm like, nope, didn't want to. Do you think that had anything to do with that? You know, I, it could have. Like I don't know. Subconsciously, I guess Maybe, but my dad would tease me. He was he would say when I was little, and so this is before my mom died, he would say that I didn't want to play with um, baby dolls. I wanted to play with Barbie dolls. And I would never be like, oh, I want to get married. I want to have babies. I would be practicing my autograph. When I was oh, like that's little, hysterical. really oh, little. Okay. So I think I was just like this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I love other out? people's kids. Yeah. I love oh, Ruby yeah. and Rocco. Yeah. I mean, and I love they that. they love you. Um, but just not for me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I get it. I think that that's more, you know, I, I always wondered if you could do it all. And I'm a big believer that you cannot. I don't believe you can have a happy marriage and great kids and a job. And, and, and no, there's always one thing that suffers, if not more. It's usually not 
all at, at the same time. Once, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's usually yes. if something's going great in your life, something else is maybe not yeah. going as well. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I find that too. Yeah. Especially as you get older, like crazy things start to happen. Oh my gosh. Your body breaks down. People you know are... You know, Breaking down. Yeah, it's just it's, you <laughs> Speaking of, I think uh, Jillian showed me a video. So you mentioned you were a Rams cheerleader. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, we, <laughs> now here's the amazing ago, thing. Yeah. You just all of these former cheerleaders. That's what you showed me. <laughs> just <laughs> went on the field with the Rams cheerleaders. Now, I mean, it's crazy. You we guys had choreographed a, a whole. It was great. <laughs> we had an alumni performance for a pregame show for Monday Night Football. And, recently, and you've been on uh, both sides. Like you've been a cheerleader yes. and you work Monday Night Football. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, right? <laughs> we were like, hey, assholes up there. Remember when you guys fired my ass for no reason? <laughs> I'm back. Up in the stand. I'm <laughs> Can't back. get rid of me. <laughs> and now I'm wearing my uniform. My leotard. I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> it's so funny. But you really, really, I was just talking about getting older and things. I mean, it's just things don't work like they used to. First of all, you don't look like you used to, but it's just. You do. Because you're, you're, everything fit properly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Spanx. what did you wear? With, the, her uniform from the. The no, 80s. no, we wore oh. like um, we wore <laughs> leggings. <laughs> They're like, what are those figure skaters doing on the field? <laughs> we wear leggings. Now they they cover up the old broads <laughs> as they should. She oh <laughs> said she wore costume days. I'm like, where's that photo? I did. Well, actually, when you, the Rams first came back three years ago, Inside Edition did a story about me meeting the new cheerleaders yeah. in my old uniform. So I did wear my there old uniform okay. three You're years like, ago. Here she comes. <laughs> that picture does exist. It's it's down to her right. knees, everybody. Because so- <laughs> now they do crop tops. I mean, it's, you know, Oh, Lord. Crazy. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. That <laughs> ship has sailed. <laughs> ship has sailed. Uh, no, I saw you recently for one of your birthdays, and you had gone to Hawaii with your friends, and you posted a uh, bathing suit shot, and you just did... Filters. No, and you just did, you did Playboy, like, 10 years ago. Oh, you know, wow. I, it's, I'm holding it together okay. Yeah, you are. You know, and I do work out, and I do, you know, try to be reasonable. You're although I do drink stairs. my wine, but we, we I love you know, our wine. We love our wine. But you do do the stairs in I, your neighborhood. I which have are been good. Plenty. I've been really good about that. You know, and I I have noticed a difference. So not only just physically, but I feel better when you work my, out. Yes, I do. There's something to that. The door. And you don't have your, your fit. Is that a Fitbit you normally wear? No. The thing that tells you your steps? No, I broke it. And, oh. and you know, <laughs> to hell with that really. I just think like, I, I'm just going to work out until I'm exhausted and then go home. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You know, I don't need to like be tracking. I don't weigh myself. I don't like blah, get blah, 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 blah. No, yeah. no. Just like I think too many people do. Every other day, I try to get a good sweat in and then go home and drink wine. Yeah. Lots of wine. Happiness. All right, let's take a little time out for our sponsor. If you've ever wondered, how can I earn this much money and still have so much debt? You're not alone. Debt has a way of creeping up on you. Listen, there's no shame in it. Bills add up. Mortgage, medical, dental, car. And that's not even the fun stuff like entertainment. The key is to pay down your debt. And I've got the answer, bestegg.com. They've got great rates and now is the perfect time to do it. Use your Best Egg personal loan to pay off those bills and credit cards. It's a smart way to hit back at the crazy interest rates that can ruin your credit rate. Now imagine paying everything off and having one easy low monthly payment. How awesome is that? Consumers rated Best Egg 4.8 out of 5 stars on Consumer Affairs for their super online loan app. And it only takes a minute. Plus there's no impact on your credit score. Now upon approval, funds can be transferred in as little as one business day. So get your bills under control. Bank what you save and take that vacation you deserve. Visit bestegg.com slash Jillian. That's bestegg.com slash Jillian. So now when you you and I traveled to <laughs> London. We decided a couple of years ago we were going to go for the Christmas holidays. Mm. I didn't have the kids. It was an off year. We had so much fun. Best vacation. Best vacation ever. ever. And so I was going to meet some of my birth family there. And Lisa was really, yeah. So my, my dad, where he was born and raised. And then. Because you I were met, adopted. Just people don't know. You were adopted. Yeah. And that is where your birth father is from. Yes. So he was born and raised in England. And then. So we ended up going to. Uh, my second cousin's house. And then we talked to Donovan and his wife, my cousin, second cousin, third on the phone. Anyway, it was a really lovely evening and we had a great time. And your, your relatives are like stars. Like you have, you have like stardom in your family. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. With the Rolling Stones. And yes. Um, My favorite story is my, yes. So this, this woman, my cousin was with Brian Jones of the Rolling Stones for seven years and they have a son. And then she ended up marrying Donovan And they've been together for 50 years because Brian has been dead for 45 or so. Yeah, 45 years. Oh, wow. Maybe even longer. But anyway, long story, Lisa was like, 
oh, this is the address for the house. You're going in. And she's like, knock on the door. There's a wreath. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. And she's like, yeah, yeah, just do it. I swear to, it's like out of a movie. I knock on the door. It might as well have been the holiday or Notting Hill. They open the door. They're like, yes, love. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be really weird. But <laughs> my, my birth dad was born and raised in here. They're like, lovely. Come on in. You want a spot of tea? You want me to, and I was like, oh, Lisa, hi. I'm like, come Can in. my friend it's come? amazing. It, it was, they were so kind. And we were, you were so beside yourself. Yeah. It was the sweetest thing. It was so cool. So these were strangers when you knocked on the door. They just happened oh, yeah. to be living where your father Oh, they bought the house. Raised, oh. They bought the house like many years later. Of course, many, yeah. Because he moved to Canada in the 60s, I think. And you never got to meet him before he passed away, right? No. Yeah. But you would talk to him on the, on phone, the phone. Well, and... you were here for a lot of that when he would send me yeah. gifts and they would smell like cigarette smoke. And I would put it outside for like <laughs> I mean, a, you couldn't have it a in the house. week. I would put it outside for a week and I'd walk back in and I'd go, oh my God, it's still stinking up the joint. I just had a vision one time he sent you a beautiful book. I, I, you know, that was the art book. And oh, I opened it up oh. and I think literally in... And trapped was, in it you, was you a cloud of smoke. I mean, it, I opened the book, it was like, Poof. and it was like the entire room, and it did not dissipate for like hours. I go, Jill, this can't be. And you had cats. I mean, there were other smells in the house, and I was like, this cannot even be indoors. It was, was it like, like cigarette smoke? Was it yes. pipe smoke? A oh, cigar? Cigarette. Cigarette. Exactly. Like I wish Old it were a pipe right. or something yeah. like you know, you know, like cherry tobacco. Cloves or this something was exotic. Horrendous. No. So yes, on uns- sadly, this everything like he sent a marble red. Blown on the page, closed, wrapped, <laughs> sent across the United States. Oh, we were dying. No, but it was bad. <laughs> and I didn't even feel bad throwing it out. I was like, okay, I know I've never met you and you are my birth father, but to rush. <laughs> um, anyway, so that was a great trip. But on that trip, Lisa and I both talked a lot about everything going on with me too. It just started and yep. it was, you know, Fox News, Fox Sports, people oh. we know. Yeah, because, you know, she was not only at ABC, Monday Night Football, but you were at the Best Damn Sports Show, which I think was probably the best show at mm. the time because you you guys got to get away with a lot. You had a lot of fun. A two-hour live show to a studio audience with sports stars and movie stars. Yeah. And everybody on our panel was, uh, you know, an alumni sports star. And then there was Tom Arnold, the comic, mm-hmm. and me. I was the chick. And every day we'd have like, you know, Ben Affleck would come in and we'd have Shaquille O'Neal. And it was just this two hour live, you know, anything goes kind of blend of comedy back and when news. You could say big sports stars and actors and me, the chick. Like, isn't that, it's <laughs> yeah. true. Like, yeah. it's, it's like, yeah. she doesn't mean it in a bad way. No, and but I can that's imagine, what it was. Like, yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. That's what TV was. It just, it was great if you came in a nice package, but if you, you knew what you were talking about. It floored them. And if you were good on the spot live or were Mm -hmm. funny in any way, it was just, they were like, yep, done. And we both, and we knew all the same because you were working at at Fox network. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we knew all the same people. Jillian, were you doing Sunday Fox NFL at that time? Uh, This might've been right before. before. Uh, Right before. This might've been right before. Yeah. But what was interesting is that as we were talking in London, we were like, wait, that happened to me too. So we, you know, there was, you know, sexual harassment, Mm -hmm. um, you know, really inappropriate goings on. And it's like, uh, oh, this happened to me, but wait, this happened to me. Did that guy do this to you? Oh yes, it did. And there's this whole culture there at Fox Sports that I am convinced still exists. And, you know, they've explored thoroughly with Bombshell and with, you know, all Mm -hmm. the, you know, Ronan Farrow, there's been a, Mm -hmm. a lot of exploration about Fox News. And the culture there, but you know, there is definitely that culture at Fox Sports as well. I am, are you surprised that it hasn't been shocked, uncovered, or shocked? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm I mean, an investigative reporter, and if I wasn't part of the story, you I'd be investigating sto- this. Yeah. But I'm actually part of the story because yeah, I, know. I was one of the women that was, you know, treated very badly there. Yeah. And so at the end of my second contract, I left, and and that's when I got Monday Night Football on ABC. So then I jumped. it worked out beautifully. It worked out fine for me, but for other people, it didn't. And mm-hmm. I, I'm, you know, and unless there's like a change at the top, that stuff doesn't go away. So I'm very sure true. that that still exists there. Yeah, I, I'm sure it does in, in different connotations. Do you know what I mean? Like new people. I've heard about makeup artists and getting settlements for... Oh, yeah. And I'm like, Huge settlement. what? Yeah, guys pulling out their... Yeah. You know? Yep. Yep. Did you have yep. anything, Jillian, while you were at Fox? I don't remember you ever telling me that was like, you know... Because, mm-hmm. I mean, you, I always say you have a sense of humor that I, I would think people would be... They would think it was very... You were comfortable with that type of humor. Right, but also what happens is like... 
I always tell the story, Terry Bradshaw saying like, you know, girl, where'd your butt go? Cause I was doing that skating show and I dropped so much weight and I lost my boobs and my butt. And he's like, where'd they go? I'm like, oh, they'll be back once my show, the show's be done in like a month. Don't worry. They'll be coming back. Like we had a great rapport. And nowadays it would be looked at as probably I'd be sexually harassing him. I don't know. I feel like it's a different world we're uh, living in. There's such a fine line though, because when you do comedy and entertainment and there's, you know, sports and, and, and double entendre, I mean, I it's just, it's hard to know where that line is. But I mean, I certainly knew when it was being crossed and it came to me, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, when I, when I, for example, I lost a job, I was passed over for the Super Bowl because I didn't sleep with my boss. Mm-hmm. one of my bosses. And so there, there are things like that that happened. So that is clear. Yeah. One of the stories wrongdoing, but yeah, you know, we figured some stuff out in London that together. Whoa, yeah. Like we were, cro- wait a second, we crossed paths there. And I'm like, that's interesting because this happened. And one of them is the guy and we, unbeknownst to both of us, but I saw the guy that she's referring to come out of a bar at 2 AM when I was at the Super Bowl in Louisiana with the girl that got her job. Now I didn't know either of them separately because you know, we had met, but mm-hmm. I would have no reason to tell her. And then the, she's telling me this and I'm like, whoa, 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 wait, what Super Bowl? Hold up. I, whoa, yeah, I New was Orleans, in New Orleans yeah. with both of them because mm-hmm. I worked at Fox Sports too. On a, a Fox, yeah, so we're starting to put the me. pieces of the puzzle together. And we put it together. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I was there the night that that girl slept with him. I know yeah, exactly I think who it, she is. And It would even be a smaller club, the one that you were both part of, being yeah. in sports and women. And, yes. Yeah, right. yeah. Versus At just the same broadcasters. Time. And we were yeah. probably right. the, one of the first to have the women come up, right? Because, I mean, there was always the uh, Jane Kennedys and the Willow Bays. Yes. But, right? Uh, yes. I think we were the first. Okay, so somebody explained to me that, you know, I'll, I certainly wasn't the first female sportscaster or broadcaster, but I was the first one to actually be on a set with men arguing about sports. So I didn't present right. the news. I didn't do sports. like feature, like, okay, sit down with a, an athlete and ask him some softball questions. I was actually asking Barry Bonds if he did steroids. I was actually pissing off, um, you know, Kurt Schilling. I was, you know, in the middle of these really tough situations with athletes. And then I was arguing with the athletes on our set about whether or not, you know, the MLB should go on strike, that it doesn't just hurt the players or the coaches or even the fans. It hurts the people that work at the stadiums, you know, that lose their jobs. So, you know, I would be getting into sports controversies Mm -hmm. every day and there had never been a woman that had done that before. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. And then you had a completely unique pioneering experience because you were the first one that was able to be like a comedian and a a personality obviously you did the weather but mm-hmm. you were so much more than that you're an wow. entertainer that was in the sports world and beautiful so you know while you're doing fhm maxim and you're you know doing the morning show you were smart you're doing also playboy in- and getting paid not me a fucking moron i passed them <laughs> up four times you moron. did i did like a freaking idiot anyway go ahead. but you know we both had really unique careers yeah. at the time yeah. and, and that those careers probably couldn't happen today mm-hmm. they were just you know we were i was plucked completely by you know david hill of uh, fox sports and he called up the station and he said i watched you in the morning well that's not true he had his lady call me and they're like we're calling from david hill's office and i blew it off and then the third time he's like what are you doing either you're very daft or this is a very good ploy to get me to call you <laughs> i'm like yeah it's the latter obviously <laughs> Uh, but he ended up being a great, uh, you know, he saw my talent. And he just said, I'm bringing her to the NFL and I don't care what anyone said. And we took a lot of shit for it. Um, and they tried to protect me from a lot of the stuff because HBO Sports would do stuff like it was just it was stupid, you know. Um, there's always haters. There's always Christine always. Brennan. Hater. Always hater. Yep. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> she was. I'll never forget the quote. It was, uh, the NFL needs Jillian Barbary like a fish needs a bicycle. And I was like, you know what? She just <laughs> insult me or because I like fish. But um, she was, and I remember thinking, wait, w- why are they coming after me? I do a fucking three minute weather segment. Like how big of a. Because it's a boys club. So any yeah. girl, any woman in it is yeah. going to stand out. Oh, how about be how sexist is this? Yeah. When HBO Sports came, the NFL did not tell me they were coming. So I'm walking to the parking lot with all my clothes. It's four in the morning, no makeup, obviously, and I'm chilling. And and I go, oh, are you guys here for Jay Moore? Because Jay Moore had just started working on the show, mm. the actor. And they're like, nope. And I was like, oh. And I just went to my dressing room. Then I find out very last minute through maybe Scott Ackerson or something. Yeah, they're doing a whole thing on the um, show today. Well, here's what they did. They took Terry and they took... Jimmy and it was either JB or Kurt at the time. I think it was JB and maybe Chris Collinsworth. And they interviewed them all on the set in different parts of the set. Some were lit, some were on the main stage where they have the faux football field. 
They interviewed me in the makeup room. How fucking sexist is that? And I say that not no. I was I didn't think about it back then, but you know my personality. I don't get. I do my own makeup. I right. was doing my hair. Mm-hmm. So it, Bernard Goldberg made it look like it was this big, like, but does the NFL really do? Why is Jillian Barber, you know, why the fuck is Jimmy Kimmel there to do right. a fun or Frank Caliendo? They're doing right. a funny Personality segment. Driven uh, people bet on features. the games, assholes. They want weather, the weather, uh, yeah, dummy. Yeah. So weather has impact. Everyone who was treating it like a scandal, I couldn't understand. And that included Bryant Gumbel's show. And from then on, I was like, they're dead to me. However, when I did, it aired, Bryant Gumbel said the greatest thing to Bernard Goldberg. He said, so wait a minute, if the fans like Jillian and the management's happy with Jillian, what's the problem? He goes, well, there is one. He goes, so there's no Jillian because they called it the Jillian factor. Mm -hmm. And they just tried to make it all about like sexiness and you don't know your shit. And I'm like, wait a second, I've done weather for 15 years. I think I know what I'm talking about, but people don't know that. And so especially women, women are the hardest on women. Y'all know who you are, you assholes. They can be the worst. Men might right. have their sexual, they can, I'm not trying to, you know, make it light, but the women, if they're in a power position and they're petty in any way, you're fucked. They will mess with your career to no end. And this is why, Jillian, you're a girl's girl. And I've told this story before um, multiple times, and I've told you how much this mattered to me at the time. But during that that time that you were on Fox, I was now on Monday Night Football doing sidelines. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I was ripped to shreds. They would do stories about whether or not I was wearing red nail polish, and it distracted believe from this? the... I mean, oh, yeah. it, there what was year so is this? Exactly. many issues. So, you know, of course, I wasn't allowed to... You know, I was too glamorous. My boobs were too big. It was like There was one thing after the other. And of course, if I made a mistake on camera, it's because clearly I don't know football. Yeah, you ding dong. Instead of, oh, she misspoke, obviously. You know, she did yeah. 10 other reports that game about that same Whatever. issue. And she did it fine 10 times with the 11th, yeah. Right. So at one point, I was just getting so much shit that it was... It, it, it was, I, I literally thought I'm going to have to quit this job. I was so depressed. It was awful. There was a guy that criticized me all the time on Monday Night Football, and he wrote for a national newspaper, and all he did was criticize me. Oh, I God. hate that guy. That yeah. guy. He was horrible to me. Yeah. Horrible to me. Once they get a bee he in their bonnet the about you. Yeah. yeah, he was the reason I was fired, I think. Okay, but they, write, rate, they write stories, and then they just inject you into them. Like, they've already got the idea, and they, uh, they, uh, they don't want you to... There was never, like, you know, Lisa Guerrero did sports for over a decade no. before she got Monday Night Football. No. Instead, I think you said, they handed the microphone to a professional cheerleader. Ooh. And you're like, oh, shit, Even though I was I'd, one I'd of those, been a but... cheerleader 15 years prior. Yeah. But not when I, you know, it wasn't like I put down my pom-poms and, yeah, they, and gra- handed grabbed the me microphone. Monday Night Football. You ran yeah. off you the know, field there, and there grabbed was a the ten, yeah. There was a decade ten of me actually working yeah. local, regional, and national sports before I got to ABC. So at any rate, just I was yeah. getting killed. So but unfair. then it got to the point where it was so bad that I was made fun of on your show. The, whoever the comic was at the I time, forget. I forget who it was. That guy it was, was on the NFL pregame show. This is one of the big show I'm talking about. Yeah, and and they came out, and I was watching, and I was of course devastated and, and, and completely humiliated. And it, they go back to you on this set. It was you and JB, mm-hmm. and you said, "Look." I know her. I know Lisa. And she knows her sports. I've known her for a long time. She knows football. That was really unfair. That was on Cult for And you were like really upset. And then JB jumped in too. And, to your defense. To my defense. Such a good person. Both of you. And then that was shocking in TV because I worked for ABC at the time. You guys were on Fox at yeah, the time. Yeah, big rivalry. And there were things written about that. Jillian Barbary stands mm-hmm. up for Lisa Guerrero. And I, I just cried after that. I couldn't Aww. believe how it meant so much to me. And yeah, that's the I'm- difference between you and other women in the... Mm-hmm in our business and we know we've met those women we've worked with those women we've worked for those women and I will work with them any day more than work for them because they have been the worst in my career at least and I think you know it goes back to what that asshole from New York wrote where you know here's a guy that if you're hot he's like I can't does not fucking compute she knows the game too she's got hot tits and a pretty face I can't compute they've got to have like the hot girl Mm -hmm. who's a fucking dumb as a box of rocks and then they gotta have the uglier girl who's smart so they're like oh I can focus on what you're saying because I'm not distracted by your tits or your face so it's those guys that they can't 
imagine the two coming in one package. Well, that's what's really confusing to a lot of people about our careers. And I, you know, now I'm an investigative reporter and I uncover, you know, crimes and scams oh. and, you know, people have been put in prison Crazy. because of the stories that we've yeah, done. Yeah, she's put people in prison in this, and she yet brought things to light that weren't, I mean, horrible, like dentists doing disgusting things to kids, like pulling their teeth out with any Novocaine. You did that story? Yes. So disturbing. That one sort of haunted me, but yeah. I did not know it was you. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. But, you know, I've been doing- me too investigations for 10 years now but what's interesting is early People on tried to kill her they tried to run her over and everything yeah, i get it's, death threats yeah, but, it's but, but what's hard for these guys this certain person that we're talking about these kind of men which yeah. aren't all men but these no. types of men is of that them, it's hard for them to uh, to take you seriously as a journalist as a person mm -hmm. and then like understand that yeah i was i also was in playboy yeah what and Wait, i remember I at one point i won two national press club awards which is a huge honor national Massive. investigative By so i'm in washington yeah, dc accepting these awards and I look out over this audience and I'm thinking to myself I'm probably the only person that's been in Playboy and mm. won a National Press Club award <laughs> <laughs> but you know what it's okay yeah it it's is okay, okay for women to be able to double it's not be okay. funny it's and super impressive and smart yeah. it's actually very impressive yeah but, you know there's still people that you know I didn't get a big job on another network recently because of you know that that connection still to Playboy even Jeez. though that was you know a long time ago it was over a decade ago but it you know the, it's really hard for people to understand understand that women can be smart and funny and yeah and sure. you know sexy but to all other of it women like I get that I don't know why men don't it's pretty simple it's not you know but they don't yeah it's and easier to categorize you and just that's you what I'm box. saying you know and it's like the whole even the hashtag me too you know Matt Damon got in so much shit recently because he said well they're varying degrees and he got blown I'm like well, but he's right he's I right mean, I'm yeah. sorry what Terry Bradshaw said to me is a lot different than a guy taking his dick out and sticking it in your face which happened to my friend who got a lot of money for it from Fox because huh you got bad people working there Fox that's what's gonna happen Bill O'Reilly it wasn't Bill who did that <laughs> but Bill paid out he did 34. other stuff yeah, yeah no he this guy was the, heading up the Latin um part and he uh did that to her Right. And anyway, bottom line is that it just sucks. It's the way it is. And people have to realize there are varying degrees of me too. I'm sorry, there are. Like what happened to uh, Asia Argento, you know, she was raped. Right. By Harvey Weinstein, allegedly, till he goes to trial, right. I guess. Right. <laughs> um, are you still working as a broadcaster, Lisa? I mean, Inside yeah. Edition Inside is her edition. whole... And that's where you're doing the investigative reporting. Yeah, correct. And that's like yeah. a, 12 years? Yeah. Um, let's see. I, they, I Weirdly, again, they hired me. I did the cover of Playboy. They did a story about me at 40 doing the cover of Playboy. And then they offered me a job as a, a West Coast correspondent. So I did a bunch of entertainment stories. But I looked over at the investigative unit and I said, that's what I want to do. And my mm. boss finally gave me a shot. And so I've been doing this for 10 years now, investigative reporting. And we're number one. Um, oh, yeah, we have so 5 great. million viewers a night. We passed up Entertainment Tonight last year. So now we are number one in syndicated news magazines. And we have a huge following online on YouTube where the kids yeah. watch our investigations. Like They'll Rocco. Watch, yeah, they watch her in, you know, like you would watch the karaoke, the, you know, carpool karaoke, you know, in, in segments. Right. And yeah, my, my kids love to watch all of that. But I also think you do the really educational stories too, in the sense like she goes undercover, so you don't really know it's her. Yeah, do you ever feel like she's like dressed on an old woman? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh. of course. And you know, we just did a story recently that hasn't aired yet that had to do with drug dealers. I can tell you that much, and it's very dangerous. You know, I've had a gun pulled out on me before. I've, I've been hit by a car. It's very dangerous. Whoa, but yeah. it's really, whoa, it's whoa, whoa. you know, know, it's wait a minute. It's yeah. work that you know. It's journalism. And if you're if if real journalists are out in the field doing their job, uncovering wrongdoing, there's going to be people that are doing some bad stuff yeah. that you're going to come in contact with. And the whole purpose of what I do is to ask them tough questions. And you can't do that through a publicist and, you know, mm. give me a press release. And in the olden days, Mike Wallace used to do this. Mm -hmm. yeah. He would do oh. amb what they used to call ambush journalism. And, you know, we don't use that term anymore. Obviously, we call them unscheduled interviews. But it's the same concept, which is you're going out <laughs> there in the community and you're finding wrongdoing, you're finding scams and crimes, and you're holding somebody accountable. I like to call it accountability journalism. And more people should try it. Yes. How amen. did you get hit by a car? We were doing a story on another dentist, a different dentist who was taking advantage of English as a second language um, community in Phoenix. And these parents spoke Spanish 
and he was taking advantage of Medicaid and and that because they have a great deal of respect for doctors, he was bringing in all these kids, not using um, anesthesia, oh. uh, pulling out too many teeth, oh and then gosh. then charging Medicaid. And these parents didn't know what to do, so they contacted, um, I think, Univision originally, a local mm-hmm. you know Spanish speaking station. And then we found out about the story, so we did it nationally. But I confronted this guy, this dentist, outside of a McDonald's because we have to be in a public place. Uh-huh. So I'm in a, a parking lot, and he gets in his car. This guy's old at this point. I think mm-hmm. he's like in his six. He gets in his car and guns it right at my <gasps> cameraman and I. So we both jump out of the way and he grazes me on my hip. And you can see me like kind of flying up in slow motion. My <laughs> hair. Oh my gosh. My hair is like. <laughs> <laughs> I held on to the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't drop that mic once. No. Nasty bruise though. For That's insane. I mean, well, that was a criminal act he did on camera. Did yeah. You, did you get prosecuted for that? So now, and that's the thing. So if. I could have, but then we wouldn't have been able to air the story. So Uh all those parents that had this class action lawsuit that wanted to see justice for their Mm -hmm. children had an opportunity of having a national show profile this guy. Mm -hmm. If I say, oh, I'm the reporter and you assaulted me and I'm going to press charges, then now I'm, you know, not objective. Mm -hmm. And so they can't air the story. So we wouldn't have been able to air the story. So they made, they gave me a choice. They said, we're happy to back you up on this. And we'll use, you can press charges and you can use this video, but then we're not going to air the story. So the more important thing was to have the story. Isn't aired. that amazing stuff you wouldn't think about that goes into it? Like a lot more goes into it than you know, you know, airing these stories. Legal is so important for, you know, we, we haven't been successfully sued in 30 years, but people try to sue us. But because our legal team is so careful Great. about what airs, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, they really try to protect us. And it can be frustrating on my side because, you know, I want to say more and do more and show more. And our legal team's like, no, no, no. Yeah. Can't do that. Can't show that. Because they, they're protecting yeah. the show, yeah. Yeah. which is good. When you do the stories, and if they've not criminally been charged yet, but this is you're getting affidavits or stories from the parents, how are you able to air this without them suing you guys when you just said the legal? I mean, how is it protected? Yeah. So if if there's a scam and mm-hmm. then we can show that, you know, there's you somebody's taking it. advantage, you can expose that. That's, that's what journalism is. Right. You know, you don't have to be charged and prosecuted and have paid your, you know, the price in prison mm-hmm. for us to be able to do. You can do a story as as you see wrongdoing happen, but we can't go and say, hey, this might have happened or this guy might have done that. And, you know, a lot of the stuff we do, we catch on hidden camera. We do a lot mm-hmm. of undercover hidden camera stories where you can actually see the scam happening, you know, in progress. Yeah, it's amazing. And then I'll do, you know, the unscheduled interview after uh, that in the, the mcdonald's parking lot <laughs> she's right. like hi lisa Guerrero, inside edition i'm like oh no did you see the new uh documentary out about mike wallace no the, um, what's it called i want to say it's called get me mike wallace but Ooh, i want to see that it's insane it's exactly what you're talking about he mm-hmm. did the ambush it's all on there the good the bad the ugly you know he had a real phobia about his face his skin mm. i thought he was super sexy in fact chris wallace used to come on the show every friday and i'd be like how's that daddy yours how, oh, is he getting buddy. a divorce yet? <laughs> like, as a joke, I like because older. I love him. Um, but it's a great documentary, and it's exactly this, what you do. It's yeah, and really very few scary. people do it now because it's, you know, it's legally There's, sensitive. It's expensive like to no have payoff. a unit go around the country. Yeah. You know, I have to have a producer and cameraman and editors. It's, you know, it's it's tough to do, but um, it's so gratifying. I love it so much. I well, love my work. Well, you're so good at it. I love it. Thank you. You're really diverse because you've done the sports thing. You've done the acting thing. You've done the serious thing. You know, you've done Playboy. I, I feel like you've done a lot and yet you're still in the game, which is insane. It's so great. I mean, and don't you feel lucky because, you know, at our age, you know, our shelf life, I'm, I'm, I know I was told this. I'm sure you were 40. told when you were younger. Yeah, you know, get ready. Save your money because you're not going to be on camera. Yeah. <laughs> you know, guys are, you money. know, they're gray and old. And But you know what? You know. Now I look at daytime TV. You've got Ellen. She's 59 or six. She's mm-hmm. turned 60. The talk, the view. The talk, they're all over 50. I mean, Love they forget that. 40. Yes. So, you know, I feel like they've changed. Look at Judy Shinley. She is yes. the highest Judge paid Judy. woman in television. Judge Judy. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. And then Sophia Vergara is number two. And guess what? 47 Latina. Yeah, right? you know, and, and you're right. It is changing it, it, because women watch shows and we want to see somebody that we can relate to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you absolutely. Know. I think, if anything, you know, you and I came at a time where that wasn't really the case. That's true. <laughs> you know, we never got to because it seemed like you two, you know, were in the same verticals, but obviously yeah. not on the same network. 
Yeah. How did you two meet? Oh, be- I think it was Best Damn Sports Show. Yeah. Because I used to fill yes. in over there or just sometimes they had me as a guest at the beginning. It was Chris Rose and you and we kind of through that. And Fox 11. Oh, Fox and Fox 11. 11. And then because we did I was Maxim. Doing, we yes, were Maxim. Yes, yes, and yes, you yes. were the first to be photographed and you came out of the studio. She looked like a million dollars and she's like, oh, they have a great hair and makeup team. I'm like, <laughs> obviously. And then I went, I felt better about it because you were, you were shooting just before me. But you came out during my shoot. And you were so nice. You you were so kind. And I was so nervous and cold because they had me on this big table, like this glass table. And I was <laughs> crawling around like a big like, in some warehouse. It was, uh, it was awful. It was, yeah. And you were so sweet. So um, yeah, we did that together. And, yeah. But I did Fox Overtime on Fox 11 with Rick Garcia mm-hmm. and Fox Extra Innings while you were at Fox 11. So I think our paths crossed there That's too crazy. at that point. So yeah, We've through always the years. Had, yeah. That's crazy, <laughs> right? 90s. And then how did you decide to travel together to go away that Christmas? We got reconnected because KBC, because I went on your show exactly as a guest. Right. And we started talking about boobs and Playboy. And yeah, of course we did. Of course. And their heads were like spinning. <laughs> it's <laughs> AM radio. They're like, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Where is Donald Trump? We need Ann Coulter. Where is Donald Trump? No one is listening anyway. Uh, we don't see uh, Ann's boobies. Where do boobies go? <laughs> we want boobies. So uh, yeah, that's exactly right. That we was con- true. We reconnected there. And then we started hanging out more. And then it was mm-hmm. like, hey. Yay! And you wanted to do London because of your family connection. Yeah. But we were also excited because of the lights. And we wanted Christmas to time. Which, oh my gosh. It was so Not special. as hill vibe uh, and amazing. everything. Oh, we did go well, there. Actually, we when did. we got off the out of the amazing. cab, we were kind of lost. Like the first five minutes, we're like, look at the lights. Where are we? Carnaby Street. Wait, I, let me get my map. This I don't know, handsome bloke comes on and he's like, are you ladies lost? We're like, whoa, this isn't a movie. Like these young, how many young, really good looking guys came up to us though? So many. And they're, and all of them said the same thing. I don't care if they were gay. You must be from California. Everybody knew. Yeah. That why? we were not from there. Wonder Everybody why. knew. We were we, we, <laughs> walking down the street. And like, you girls are from California. <laughs> they knew. It was very weird. <laughs> I'm just going to ask him, did you make out with any of these young men or... Yes, oh, I, I'm getting right to it. This is the... Okay, tell us because you know the other thing I'll say. Jill and I, have, Jill and I have traveled it's a together podcast. a lot. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> okay, Jillian's dying right now. Yeah, we have is, such a juicy see, story. Is, Lisa, this so is a good. podcast that will never leave this no, room. No, we so just share every story with us. Yes, it please. Is a great story. The only person that can tell the story is Jillian. <laughs> I can back her up. Okay, okay. all right, but so, it's truly Jillian's story we to go... tell. <laughs> We go into one. You don't have to tell the whole thing if you don't want to. Oh, I don't I won't, I won't, like, Okay, we go into a, a bar. It's a gay bar. And so I'm like, all right, cool. We're with our so people. So much fun. Such right. a fun gay bar. We are with our people. And so, of course, we have a couple cocktails. I'm like, yo, to the bar. I'm like, hello, lads, chops over here. I'm like, she was in Playboy. They're like, oh, they're all screaming, going crazy. <laughs> so I, I'm on my phone showing them the internet. That's her. Those are her boobies. Yeah. That's her. Meep, 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 meep. So... They're like, oh, these are some cool girls. We'll hang out with them. But I'm like, hi, oh, good luck, but you're all gay. This one finds the only single in the house. <laughs> the only straight guy. The only straight single. At the bar. Well, we thought. And yeah. he's at the bar <laughs> and he's ordering. And then he starts talking to her and buying drinks and blah, blah, blah. And he's good looking. And he he's looks a like a punk player. rocker. And my favorite Ooh, band is The Clash. The Clash. Oh, so he them. looked like and he was like, st- oh my God. God, Perfect. I was like, are you a punk rocker? I know you're, and he was like a hockey player, right? He played hockey. He, yeah, he played hockey. Some hot, hot punk rocker meets LA Kings. I don't know. Yeah, it, it was, like it was it, it, very much. I mean, he stood out. He was good looking and he was straight. Okay, so the night progresses. We go to this uh, late, late bar. Do you remember that one? Mm-hmm. With the booths. And oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And were you guys making out? Yeah. Okay. So they're making out and things are going good, I guess. <laughs> and then... uh they're like, yeah, you want to come back to the hotel? He's like, all right. <laughs> Shit, yeah. Come on. So he comes back to the hotel. Lobby. Lobby. Exactly. It was a lobby. lobby bar, like a library lob- lobby. It was I'm very like, cool. I'll make some cocktails. And they have lemons and limes and every single hard liquor drink you could think of. And uh, anyway, so I'm making, I don't know what the hell I'm making. It was a horrible cocktail. Uh, he said it was horrible. horrible. I, how do you even horrible. remember? We are also buzzed. <laughs> but I think he said, I'll take over or something he does. Okay. Then he tried to move on you or something and you got mad. I don't know. Something happened. No, okay. So we're making out. Everything's great. And then he's like, I want to go up to your room with you. I'm like, eh, no, sorry. No, that's right. So I was like, okay, I don't, I don't remember what exactly happened, but I just remember I'm not going to sleep with this guy. Mm-hmm. So I go up to the room 
and I'm like, okay, night's over for me. I go up and I'm starting to wash my face. And then I hear this pounding on the door. <laughs> it's the dude. <laughs> I told him to go back up. Jillian tells him to go up to the room. I'm like, she'll love it. I open the door thinking it's goes, Jillian, drunk goes, Jillian. Goes, it's not drunk Jillian. It's oh. a hockey player, uh, punk rocker guy. I open the door. She's like, what are you doing? And, and he's like, I want to come in. I'm like, I don't know you. And I try like, but you, know, I you can be an ax murderer. Like, you I'm better, not letting you in my room. Like, you better get up there and get to him. I'm like, go. Oh. So <laughs> I kicked him out of the room. And he walks back dejected through the lobby, yes! flipping he Jill did. off. <laughs> Kind of. <laughs> kind of. Kind of. Oh, my God. So then he comes to... <laughs> can I tell the G-rated version? You can tell the G-rated version. <sighs> okay. So he comes back to the, to, the, to the bar, and I'm chilling. Don't ask what happens next. We're making out. I don't know. Whoa, 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 whoa. Jillian's making out with, with, <laughs> with the, the same hockey player guy. Yeah. So you felt bad that Lisa didn't close the deal upstairs. And you're like, all right, sad, I'll sad. take one for the team. I'll, tell, I'll take one for the team. <laughs> and sad, then, sad. but then this is the funniest part. So, so those goes, guys are going at it. She comes I down. Comes back, I go back down. No. I, I lost my credit card. I know. But I realized as I'm like getting all my stuff together and the, the guy's gone. So I'm thinking he's like gone now. He got in a cab somewhere. So I go down to the front desk because I lost my credit card somewhere around, you know, I guess what's night. just after the side of the front desk? The bar. There's the bar and there's Jillian and this dude <laughs> making it out. So you're going to make me pee, okay? <laughs> so then she goes, what the fuck? <laughs> Not even mad, but just like, what's what going on? Doing? What are you doing? Like, like, seriously, what were you doing? Okay. So I go upstairs. All right. So- I go back upstairs. Yeah, and I come up and I go, hey, listen, this dude is not worth it. This is bullshit. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> How about me trying to push him back up there? And then he comes down, I'm like, I'm sorry, you're dejected. Listen, it's all good. So <laughs> you're working every angle right She's now. like, wait, what's going on? And I go, who needs that son of a bitch? I turn around, he's standing there behind He's at our me. room. He's at the room. He's at the door to our room. I'm like, who cares about that son of a Oh, he's right there. And uh, <laughs> so he comes into the room. Oh. As Lisa and I are talking, yeah. we're having conversation. He passes out on the bed. We're on like, our bed. We're like, what? Oh, what? God. Mm-hmm. Oh, and no, he took off his jeans. So he's in his red oh, underwear red. on our bed. It was your Christmas package. I think. <laughs> <laughs> but, so so was, then this is the best part. She's no. like, fuck him. Remember you go, I don't give a shit. I'm sleeping in my spot. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And I had to sleep on the couch. But he was curled <laughs> up in a coil. And then I'm like, fuck you. And I would try to push him out. And then I climbed in. Nothing went on, by the way. Nothing went on. Good but it was really funny. But remember, we still we, we were so grossed out by him that time. We're like, get him out of the bed. We're like, the sun's coming up. I don't want him in here. I don't. He's passed out. We're talking over him. I'm like, get him the fuck out. Like he's a dead body. She's like, dead weight, dead weight. Then we have to put his pants on. Ew, I'm not touching that. Remember that? <laughs> yes, we all, I he's sleeping, snoring. And we're talking about this is the night we were talking. I think about Fox Sports, and all of a sudden we're having this really serious, heavy conversation, heavy conversation over a with dead a bo- passed body. out guy in red <laughs> underwear on our bed. <laughs> That I made out with earlier in the night, and, and Jillian ended up at the up end of the night. <laughs> you don't even want to know. Did he wake up and go, "Where the hell am I? Who are you?" Too? I was yeah. so mean to him. I'm like, "Hi, get, get out. out!" She goes, like, "Literally, <laughs> get out!" I was gonna. I was like, "Oh, good morning. Would anyone like some orange?" Get out! Oh, you're okay. Very, I go. What she said? Yeah, Jill, you're very accommodating. <laughs> She's very oh accommodating. <laughs> Lori. So you two travel really well together. <laughs> wow. Okay, I was worried about we do. Because your girlfriends can go away and it can go sideways on oh, you. Oh, no, this is no. the best part. We were so mean to him. And then we found out his name and we looked him up on Facebook. And there he is with his wife and kids. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah, of course. He's a pro- he was a professional hockey player. Yeah. Oh, of course. he's a very bad man. So I was like, I said, oh, my God, aren't you glad we like dodged that bullet? And then he tried to follow me on Facebook. <laughs> Like, no, I was like, not. aren't you glad we dodged that bullet? I mean, you did. And then I took the bullet right in. She took the bullet for me. Then I invited the bullet back. <laughs> yeah, you didn't shake that it's bullet. It's my favorite. Up. We're like, yeah, fuck that. No boy's going to come between our shit. Oh, God, he's right there. And then he like, pushes past me. And then he goes on. He goes on our bed. between you all night. Oh, and then we start talking shit so about him in the morning. Funny. We're like, oh, fuck him. Anyway, so blah, blah, blah. Did you order breakfast? Let's get breakfast. Aren't we going here today? Yeah, she's like, oh, when is he going to leave? I'm like, I don't know. When's he going to get up? We were mean. We were mean. <laughs> But you know what? Fuck he him. Deserved he deserved it. it. Did he have any morning <laughs> alert wood or oh, anything? Oh, here was the oh the morning wood. No, 
know. He did not have that. He was too hungover. Yeah, he was in a bad way. And by the way, you know, even if he was going to, she wouldn't, she would have put the salt Peter on that action. She was like, yeah, hi, get the fuck out. The salt Peter. Is that a a Canadian (laughs) tomb? What is that? No, it's a thing they put in the guy's uh, food in the Army, Air Force, Navy, and Marines. You guys don't know this? No, what? What It takes their whole sex drive away. Salt Peter. What? Are you guys joking me right now? As my son would say, are you joking me? (laughs) Yeah, it's like a, a, this a reminds spice. me when you told me I had a brother named Barry, and I'm like, "Who the hell's Barry?" I said, "My brother." How dare you? What? Salt Peter? No, I've never heard of that. Peter's my other brother. <laughs> <laughs> no, Salt Peter's something you put in food, and so when the you know whether they're Can you criminals get that currently, just asking as a curious wife. Oh. Not, no, just kidding, just curious. Can I sprinkle it on a steak? Here is your pasta today. How, how is it on sushi? Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, they do that so the guys don't go too crazy. I have never heard of that. You've heard no. of it, though, right, Catherine? No. Thank you. Someone no. else. One of our producers, fine, yeah. knowledgeable over there. I feel like there. it's an investigation. <laughs> Lisa, no, they get do. on it, stat. I feel. <laughs> so you've seen some ugly things, though, now at Inside Edition as far as uncovering and... You know, where do you get most of the ideas from, the so stories? So we have three great producers, story producers, and we have a senior producer and then an executive producer, a great cameraman, and two great story coordinators. So everybody's responsible for constantly pitching ideas. So we're all year long, we pitch hundreds of ideas. We end up shooting about 50. Um, and That's our executive lot. producer, you know, does the green list. So he'll, like, decide what we do. And what if you have a story that you're really passionate about and they're not? Then sometimes, you know, if I'm really, and I beg and beg, you know, sometimes I'll go, okay, well, you know, why don't you go explore that and see if there's anything there. So they're really, we're a really good team. We work very well together in terms of having, you know, ideas and respecting each other and working together on the road because I'm traveling to very small towns yeah, 50 all over the country is a together. Lot. Yeah. I mean, it's like my brothers. They're they're like my brothers. Every time I see you uh, post a picture on social media, you're in a different destination. You're getting on a plane. You're getting off a plane. You're in a hotel room. Mm-hmm. Um, you're chasing And these bad aren't guys. Ritz-Carlton's. I mean, yeah. we're not staying. And I don't no. fly first class. And I don't have a private jet. You know, it's yeah. coach. And it's, you did know. Did you see, the, by the way, the private jet one she did? It's probably my favorite. Oh, Kenneth Copeland. It, Kenneth Copeland. It went viral. She interviewed a pastor who has some planes. And she was like, hi, pastor. What a little, uh, he had made a comment that people that fly coach are demons and he doesn't want to fly with them. He said that. Okay. And what? That's what he said. That's that what was he said. Quote. Yeah. That's all of his donors. That's all of his yeah. parishioners. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the people that donate to him are poor, are minorities, are senior citizens. So she was like, hi, how much did you pay for this plane? And he goes, he, you have to look it up on the internet. It went viral because he started to lose. It was like he was like, meh, 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 like he was going to explode. First he's Point, pointing at me girly, and screaming at me, girly. and then he's flirting with then me. Then he goes, "You got real pretty eyes." Like creepy. he's trying over every me, he's grabbing tactic. my hand and praying over me, and he was trying to distract me from my questions. Initial question, which was, "Aren't you taking donors' dollars and living this luxurious lifestyle and buying private jets?" and is it true that you think people that fly commercial are demons? And so she kept on him, kept on him. And he was very flustered. He had moments where he wouldn't speak. That was crazy. She asks a question and instead of going back, she lets him sit there. And there's this awkward silence for the, I loved it. <laughs> I lo- there was, it was, it was, it was one of the most crazy interviews. It, it was awkward. It was, it was hilarious. Everything. It was interesting. But you got so much good revealing. press. People were saying, good for this is how you do an interview i don't know if you saw that people were saying this is how an interview is done take notice when you're interviewing politicians hold their feet to the fire oh i have pretty eyes i do like just because she's good looking you think she's gonna fall but those old white dudes think that way i mean it's just the way it is and this guy bought she goes oh you bought tyler perry's plane how much and he goes that is none of your business girly like he got cuckoo oh he's crazy he goes it's, really it's not even I, I got a good deal like that's gonna make it yeah, better honestly google <clears throat> kenneth copeland inside edition or kenneth copeland lisa guerrero oh, and great. watch the full length it's 11 minutes but it's it's time well spent it is <laughs> doing so, it tonight it is so entertaining <laughs> and i kept saying to her oh my god you're on good morning america's talking about you you're on like i would get all these you know variety and you were everywhere huffington post uh, chicago trip it was like crazy but they're like oh my god a good interview who 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 knew where do you think that comes from just to have sort of the bravery the gumption the strength to be able to go into these situations even all the way best damn sports show you've been one of the first women there they're gonna ask hard questions and now you hear traveling all over the united states going into dangerous investigative situations and putting yourself in jeopardy at times i mean hit by a car, a gun pulled on you. That's insane. Where where do you think that came from in you? You know, I think having been raised by a dad, a single dad that raised Mm -hmm. me 
not like a boy or a girl should be raised just looking at me saying, what do you want to do As a when human, you grow up? Yeah. I, I wanted to be a quarterback for a long time because I love Dan Fouts. And my dad never told me, oh, girls aren't quarterbacks. He's like, okay, let's go practice in the backyard. So I just have an, an incredible father. And I know 100% that the reason that I've been able to be successful at these things is just because he told me, of course, you're going to be. Well, so, you know, obviously he's a great guy. Well, it's just interesting because I think, you know, Jillian, now you're a single mom. Mm -hmm. It's hard to navigate these waters mm -hmm. and you don't know what your kid's going to turn out to be or what their passion's going to be. So in some ways you don't want them to go off on a million tangents, but at the same time, you know, we, we've done interviews where someone talks about their childhood. They were making movies as a kid and now they're a very successful movie director. Mm -hmm. Well, some parents have been like, no, I'd rather have you in baseball. I'd rather have you playing sports. My son, my God, I would love to play sports just to have a physical activity. Not into it at all. My husband was the coach on every team. It was like a nightmare. I mean, the last game of the season for the basketball season, I looked over and my husband's like almost like Coach Wooden, like the whole team's around him. He's got, the, you know, he's got his clipboard. He's giving them, and I'm like, where is Ethan? Where is he? And I look over, he's talking to the announcer, like chatting him up. Couldn't have oh, paid maybe him. that's what he'll <laughs> do. Oh, he'll broadcast. I'm a crosser, like going get over to your dad who is the coach he's that you're the only reason why he's here so the best thing you do is not force your agenda on your kid and then your dad back then when there probably wasn't the parenting guides and all the podcasts and all the blogs about parenting that he just knew that instinctually is amazing yeah he did it was it was really and then when my mom died he put me in grief therapy um, it was, back it then? was, it was, Amazing. yes, back then, but it was wow. theater therapy in San Diego. The old globe theater had oh, a wow. children's therapy program. And so you act out your grief in scenes oh. and you learn through, you know, acting, uh, exercises, how to channel your, your grief, your negativity, your uncertainty. And so when I was eight, I learned how to deal with that through art and through, you know, oh, through acting incredible. and my brother, even, he put my brother in music therapy and my brother ended up being a musician too. We haven't so. even talked about her <clears throat> art. She's an artist too. You both are. That's incredible. Well, she her makes art's these, amazing. but you have a book out. I mean, she takes old costume jewelry or pieces of like brooches. In fact, we went to Portobello road, the market. That was fun. <gasps> that was so much fun. And so she'll pick out they could be old brooches, stones, what have you. And she gets them from all over the world. And then she does themes and she makes napkin rings out of them. And it's called joy for your table, joy for your table. Yeah. And, and so it's all, all the seasons and all of the different things we celebrate. But anyway, so she makes these, then she makes these incredible mosaics in her backyard or she has like this art shop and where she literally does cement mosaics. Like she, you have one over your fireplace outside that's insane. Thank you. Yeah. I, Beautiful. I think that we all have an inner artist, but if you have a very stressful job or if your family life is very stressful, you need an artistic outlet. You just do. You have to have one. You have to find it. And, and Jillian's found hers. And I just think that it gives you balance. Mm -hmm. I agree. Your stuff is really, okay, so she has this back walkway that goes from the front of her house to the back and it's a winding path. So she does these tiles and they're all personal. Like they, they tell a story of your life. Yeah. So I do little mosaics. So she does the mosaics in within the Mexican pavers. And so it looks really great. And, um, some of the things that you do, some of them are, you love the Dodgers. So you had yeah. some Dodger stuff. You've had Dia de los Muertos is a big theme. Mm -hmm, so yeah. I have a lot of, you know, skulls and animals, birds, both my dogs I did in mosaic, yeah. cupcake and Twinkie. They're really good. Will forever live out in my mosaic yeah. patio. But um, I try to, I try to make, things that I make personal and mosaics is an interesting type of art form because it can last for decades and you can walk on it. You can touch it. You can, you know, mm -hmm. if it's done right, it'll last hundreds of years That's because oh, wow. it's grouted and sealed, you know, it's, it's made out of glass and ceramic and stone. And then you, you know, you attach it to a backboard and you grout it and you seal it and it can be used forever if it's done right. There are mosaics still in, in Greece and, you know, in Italy that have, have been around for hundreds and hundreds of years oh wow so it's something yeah. you can leave behind that you can actually touch and use so the people that buy that house that you live yeah. in they'll have <laughs> like, quite a story do you like this if I not i'm digging it up forever <laughs> yeah. now the good thing is that you've got family here you're going to visit your dad spend some time with him and did he ever remarry because he, he sound, did oh good because yeah. he sounded like an amazing guy yes yeah. he did he got remarried to pam who's a great stepmom they got married when i was already out of high school he waited till we oh, got you know 18. out of high school mm. i was i was actually i think their first date was a rams game to see me cheer 
So I was 19 or 20 mm. okay. on their first date. And so oh, they've been wow. married since then. And you get along great with her. You always love speak her. so She's highly great. of her. So kind. Gerontologist. So as my dad's a social worker, she's a gerontologist. So she works they, with older people. And then she people was back. a big grant writer for nonprofits. Yeah. And so what else is next for you? Do you think that you would... I need to find a man, sister. Oh, okay. I was going to say to you, well, I know you'll date again. <laughs> Will you marry again? I would marry again. Yeah. I know that that's not something that you no. would want to do. I, I, you know, we've talked about this before. I like being a teammate. And I like feeling like I, I do have too, but I just somebody. don't like when they get traded or, you know, <laughs> they go traded. on waivers. <laughs> what? They go on waivers and stuff. Traded. It's like, I don't understand what's happening. Or you're like, oh, I should have, oh, damn it. I knew I should have signed with that other team. But, um, but you <laughs> see, I remember when you, cause I knew you with your first husband and then the crazy dating years. And you kind of even said then that you didn't think you'd ever have kids. You didn't think you'd ever get married again. And then I did. I and know, then I introduced yeah. you to your husband. Yep. And but, then that'll change. And but, I will never get married again. Really? I mean, are no, you, come on. You know. Well, I don't just know. Just the trauma I, of marriage. I agree, it's too though, much. Liz. It's I, too I, much. I bet you will. Oh, I no, think no, you're no. going to find no, love again. Bite well, your tongues. You, well, you're not going to go through the stress. Like the next person you marry, most likely. You're not going to have kids. You're <sighs> right. not going to have parents together. That. It'll it be, should be nothing but pleasure fun. Oh, and please. fun. Oh, please. I'm always used to taking care of the men in my life. And being the single mom, I'm over we'll it. Cha- I would say this. Like you have to change that expectation. It's like you can look at like either you really want an equal partner. Yeah. Or you want someone that's going to take care of you. And not, we're not talking financially so much because I know your big thing was emotional. Mm-hmm. Right. So to me, it's like you have to almost be like, that is the expectation I'm going out with. And mm-hmm. if someone can't meet that, then just no second date, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. How do you feel about that? Because that doesn't affect me at all because I don't date. <laughs> I know. you got to get back out there <laughs> you eventually. Do. You do. I don't know. If like I said, I found a great guy for you. Can I set you up on a date? Would you go? No. What? I, Probably not. I mean, I, I like... Put it on the universe. Yes. 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 yes, you will. Yes. Yes, you will. But Jillian. anyway, you. you want to get married. Your your experience with marriage by and large was it was not traumatic. It wasn't you were like, okay, it, it did not end like I thought it was going to. Right. But it's 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 a lesson and I'm moving on. And I would get married again because you like the idea of being on a team. I do. I, I somebody having your back. Yeah, I like that. And I, you know, I'm a no drama person. I just like to, you know, wake up in the morning, I wake up happy and I have a job that I love, friends that I love, family that I love. I'd like to have yeah, you're really you know, well share it with somebody mm-hmm. that is also hopefully accomplished and normal and can pick up the check. That'd be good because I had a young boyfriend for a minute and mm-hmm. um, it's they just, just don't. That didn't work out. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking for somebody that has his own thing, you know, has his own life mm-hmm. and that we could just share that together. Mm-hmm. You know, I have a life, you have a life. That would be and nice. Let's go wine tasting in Napa next weekend. That's what I that would, would like. That would be your ideal. Yeah, that would be ideal. And he also has to be great looking. Of course. <laughs> and should be tall. So. And do you have an age <laughs> limit on it? Are you um, Okay, so are my thing older is now? if you're not young enough to be my son or old enough to be my father, then you're fair game. Okay. As long as we couldn't be related. Oh, so that's, that's, like a, that's probably age. like a 16-year swing each yeah. way. Yes, uh, that's actually a pretty interesting motto. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I usually date younger guys. Yeah, well, yeah. Because they're hot. Right. Well, both my ex-husbands are younger. <laughs> yeah, they are. Uh, I mean, my, and that's the my, ex, my ex is younger too. And what comes with that, it can be a certain, I'm not saying this about our exes, but what comes with a younger man could be a certain level of immaturity that we're just over, don't have time for anymore. Right. But now I'm at the age where I think like, yeah, you could be like my age-ish. Yeah. would be ish, probably ish. perfect. I-S-H on the end of that. <laughs> the ish. You're like, okay, that's good. Oh my God. Well, Lisa Guerrero, I love you so much. Thank you. I love you back. And I'm so glad that you came to share because we have so much in common, but I think it's important to put the female perspective out there, the women that have been there since the beginning and to know that you know we are friends and there's no cattiness if anything there's a lot of drama going on on the boys side of town all right but we love each other and i love you and i love that you're doing this podcast i can't wait to hear all of them i can't wait and we will tell you where you can find lisa one of her many jobs uh, artwork and you've got the cheerleading for the love of god (laughs) i'm like geez look at the back bend and then you've got you look at her doing the splits i mean men she can still do splits oh yeah that's impressive that should don't oversell me liz don't (laughs) oversell <laughs> and, then, and then all of her pictures go see them you see her with her aquanet hair in the 80s and it was blonde and then you can see her beautiful playboy and you can see your gorgeous inside edition pieces which i love when you chase these bad guys oh i'm like you wouldn't be running for her if you saw her playboy <laughs> you wouldn't be running away or trying to run her over anyway oh, love you lisa no, i love you so much <laughs>